Thank you, Madam President. I, uh, I fully associate myself with uh, the comments just made by the senator from the great state of Alaska. Uh, we've got to get to work here, but I'm here to talk about one of the most pressing issues we have to deal with. Yesterday, we had uh, lunch where the, where the president spoke about why tax reform is so criti critical for healing the economy and really having our nation rise to its full capabilities in terms of economic performance and global competitiveness. You read the headlines, the headlines read like Republicans uh, for the big guy, for the, for the corporations, not for the little guy. You hear them talk about policies that will have us drowning in red ink. You'll hear them talk about unsustainable economic policies. I saw all those headlines before, about six years ago in the North Carolina State House. When we inherited a disaster for an economy, it was after the 2008 crisis, we had a state that was drowning in red ink, two and a half billion dollar structural deficit. We had a tax code that was absolutely out of sync with our competition. And we set about fixing it. And what we ended up doing, all the headlines looked exactly the way the headlines look today. But we had members on both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans, recognize that North Carolina should be one of the fastest growing, most competitive states in the nation. So we went about trying to figure out how we made that happen. We determined for one thing, there was an undue burden on individuals and working families. So we had to simplify the tax code and we had to reduce the tax burden on the individuals. But we also recognized that our corporate tax rate was preventing us from getting the job expansion opportunities that states like South Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Virginia were winning time after time after time. There had been a long time by the time I came in as Speaker of the House before we had any major economic development opportunity in North Carolina. So we were able to put together a corporate tax cut, an individual income tax cut, and in our case, even a sales tax cut that all of the pundits said was going to be a disaster. It ended up engineering and serving as the basis for one of the most significant economic turnarounds of any state over the past 30 or 40 years. Going from a zero rainy day fund to a two billion rainy day fund. Um, putting more money into education, putting more money into Medicaid, creating the resources that allow us to do the other things that we want to do. Now, when I was speaker, I had to go look and see what Texas was doing. I see the senator from Texas here and say, what could we do to be more competitive with Texas? Um, we looked at Iowa. What could we do as a matter of tax policy that would make us more competitive with Iowa on, uh, let's say, agriculture? That was our peer competitors. As a state leader, I'm looking at my peer competitors and their states. Our corporate tax policy is to look at China, look at Russia, look at Europe, look at our competitors and make it very clear that we are, we are out of step. As Senator Blunt said, years ago we weren't out of step, but we are today. We're not competitive with people that we should be cleaning their clock in terms of economic expansion. And you only get that done if you lower the corporate tax rate. If you actually get people who will invest that capital and hire more people, provide more opportunities for working families, create more demand for jobs, so that wages go up. That's how you ultimately get this economy moving to a point to where we create the resources to also ultimately pay down the debt, which I still consider to be the single greatest threat to our national security. Now along the way, the reason I knew our tax policy was about right where it needed to be was virtually every lobbyist in Raleigh was mad at me, and I mean all of them. And if you look at 1986, the last time we did meaningful tax reform, virtually every lobbyist on Capitol Hill was mad at the, uh, at the folks who voted for the bill, and that was on a bipartisan basis. So we have to have members who are willing to go big, who are willing to actually reduce the corporate tax rate, work on the tax burden for working families, recognize that it is on us, and we're in a historic opportunity to turn this economy around and take advantage of the fact 
that other countries are not heeding the call. They're leaping more or heaping more regulations on their businesses. They're, they're adding more taxes in some cases. This is a, a historic opportunity for us to just blow past the competition and ultimately create the resources to retire our debt and provide the critical resources we need for so many other things that we need to get done here, like strengthening our national defense, making sure our homeland is safe, securing the border. All of these kinds of things can be done, but they can only be done if we have the courage to move forward with tax cuts and tax reform. And I hope that all of my members before Thanksgiving are in this chamber and have an opportunity to vote for that bold, actually a bold reform package, but more importantly, the fulfillment of a promise that we made to the American people if we had majorities in the Senate, in the House, and in the White House. We have it, and it's time for us to act. And I will guarantee you, I don't care what the headlines read, because I've seen those headlines before. I don't care what the special interests want in terms of an exemption and exemption, because I've had those meetings in my office before. And at the end of the day, every single one of those folks who wanted to pick apart one exception or an exemption have come back into my office and said, you know what, you protected us from ourselves. Because if you'd listened to us, we'd have done far less than you were capable of doing. And there's nobody who follows state politics that questions that what was done in North Carolina has been an extraordinary turnaround. Now it's time to do the same thing for this great nation. And I hope that all of my colleagues will set aside the distractions, mute the voices of the special interests that will want their special exemption or exception, and fulfill the promise that we made to the American people. Madam President, thank you. I yield the floor.